Hello, my darlings, and welcome. Yule is also known as the winter solstice, the first day of winter and the longest night of the year. Moving forward, the sun becomes stronger, the days get longer, and we celebrate the return of the sun. Here are some ways to celebrate the season. Let's do some magical crafting. There are a number of ways that you can celebrate the season or day. Please feel free to use the suggestions that resonate with you and that work best with your space and your schedule. As always, you can take some of these ideas and customize them to fit your traditions and practices. You can celebrate the day or the season in general in the weeks leading up to and following this holiday. Much of the celebration during Yuletide centers on the return of the sun, and winter solstice marks the first day of winter. There are several goddesses that are especially associated with this time of the year. You may wish to honor Amaterasu, the goddess of the sun in the Japanese pantheon and the Shinto religion. She is the sacred goddess illuminating the sky and a wonderful deity to honor if you want to bring some sunshine into your day. Amaterasu's gentle beauty and warmth radiates life force and hope throughout the blessed land of Japan and far beyond. Amaterasu can show you your beauty and your potential. The royal family of Japan is descended from this vibrant life-giving goddess. She represents fertility and causes the plants to grow. They give life to not only humans, but to the gods as well. In her most well-known adventure, Amaterasu shut herself into a cave after her younger brother brought chaos and destruction to the earth. When she did this, the world was plunged into total darkness and death. Only when she re-emerged did light and joy return. And so it is that Amaterasu is associated with returning life and joy after dark times. Skadi is a Norse giantess and a goddess of winter, hunting and skiing. She is known as the snowshoe goddess and she rules over mountains, wilderness and winter. She also represents the concepts of knowledge, justice and independence. A free spirited goddess who is passionate in her pursuits of hunting and especially in the pursuit of justice. Skadi is determined to live how she wants and not be told by the gods of Asgard what to do. Beera is the queen of winter in the Celtic pantheons of Scotland, Ireland, and the British Isles. The Celtic Beera represents the hag or crone aspect of the triple goddess and rules the dark days between Samhain and Beltane. She appears in the late fall as the earth is dying and is known as a bringer of storms. She's a magical being who represents rebirth and renewal as she bathes in or drinks from the well of youth and becomes a young woman every spring. The Greek goddess Demeter is also associated with the coming of the winter season. While she's best known as a goddess of growing things, through her daughter Persephone, Demeter is strongly linked to the changing of the seasons and particularly to the coming of winter. When Persephone was abducted by Hades, Demeter's grief caused the earth to die for six months until her daughter's return. If you're interested in learning more about them, I have goddess wisdom videos about these goddesses and I'll leave a link to them below. One of my main focuses for Yule, and a major winter solstice tradition, is light. Fire festivals celebrating the rebirth of the sun held on winter solstice can be found throughout the ancient world. In the Persian pantheon, December 25th is sacred to the birth of the sun god Mithras, and is celebrated as a victory of light over darkness. In Sweden, December 13th is sacred to the goddess Lucina, the Shining One. It's a celebration of the return of the light 
and Lucina is often represented by a simple lit candle. On Yule itself, around the 21st, in the Norse tradition, bonfires are lit to honor Odin and Thor. One magical craft that I like to do to celebrate the season is to make beeswax and pine cone fire starters. Place a pine cone in a baking cup and drizzle it with melted wax. You can fill them with herbs, spices, and scents of the season to add some extra magic to your Yule fire. My favorite kind of fire starter to make is a magical wishing cone. Simply write your wishes and intentions for the new year on slips of paper. Roll them up tight and stick them into a pine cone. Add a wick and a coating of wax and you have a wishing cone. You can use it to start your Yule log or bonfire or burn it in a ceremony or ritual. My favorite part of the season is handcrafting holiday decorations. The winter solstice marks the first day of winter, a time of slowing down and hibernation. The weather is cold and it's time to turn the focus to our homes. So why not decorate the inside of your home to add some holiday cheer? I recommend making decorations out of everyday materials that you have at home or that you can get from nature. It's both economical and beautiful. Each plant brings its own magic into the mix. You may wish to hang live garlands made of conifers, ferns, berries, sticks, and pine cones over windows and doorways. You can create garlands of dried oranges, apples, popcorn, and even fresh cranberries to string up on trees or along entryways. Orange and clove pomanders and herbal potpourri are easy to make and they're wonderful ways to scent the home without using perfumes that sometimes cause allergies to flare or headaches and migraines. Gather small sticks and twigs and tie or glue them together with twine to make stars that can be hung around the house. And don't forget to cut out a few paper snowflakes. If decorating your home for the winter months sounds like something you'd like to do, the winter solstice is a great day to do it. I've created several DIY videos for crafting magical Yule decorations, and I'll leave a link to them below. The Yule log was originally an entire tree that was carefully chosen and brought into the home with great ceremony. The largest end of the log would be placed into the fire hearth, while the rest of the tree stuck out into the room. On winter solstice, the log would be lit from the remains of the previous year's log, which had been carefully stored away. The log would slowly be fed into the fire through the 12 days of Yule. A common winter solstice tradition is to make a Yule log you can decorate your log and let it sit out as a decoration until it's time to burn it. Decorate with evergreen branches, pine cones, holly sprigs, and other herbs or dried fruit. If you make a decorative or symbolic Yule log, you may wish to drill holes in the top of the log and place three to four candles in it. Large gatherings were held during the burning of the Yule log. Songs were sung, people danced, meals were shared, and no work was done while the Yule log burned. It was a very special and festive time. If you don't have a place to burn a Yule log, you can make a decorative or symbolic version or bake a log-shaped cake to celebrate the season. Traditional winter solstice celebrations are a time of gathering and feasting with friends and family. You may wish to stay up all night on this longest night of the year to watch the sunrise. Food is often part of celebrating any holiday, and winter solstice is no exception. The kind of foods present during solstice gatherings vary from culture to culture, but common foods consist of festive meats like lamb, ham or roasted chicken, winter root vegetables, and colorful preserved fruits and other sweet treats. 
you may wish to make wassail. Wassail comes from the Old Norse, vesheil, or the Old English, washal, and it means literally to be hale, hearty, or healthy. It's a beverage of hot mulled cider, drunk traditionally as an integral part of wassailing, or going door to door, singing carols. It's a medieval ritual intended to ensure a good cider apple harvest the following year. Another festive holiday beverage is mulled wine. It's tradition to craft this magical brew, essentially a hot mulled wine made with red wine or apple cider, herbs, spices, and fruits of the season. Enjoy this hot beverage on a cold night or use it as an offering to the spirits of the season by placing a separate chalice on your altar during a Yule ritual. The wine is perfect to be used as a sacred libation and poured upon the earth to honor ancestral spirits. Mold wine is traditionally brewed with allspice, clove, anise stars, cinnamon sticks, red wine or apple cider, and fresh oranges or orange peel and apples. Another ritual you can do to celebrate the winter solstice is a releasing ceremony. It's the opposite idea of the wishing cone that I mentioned earlier. Instead of releasing your hopes and wishes, you release the regrets, disappointments, and failures of the current year as a symbolic way to clean the slate for the coming year. There are many different ways to do releasing ceremonies. A simple method is to use slips of paper, write what you want to release in the coming year on the paper, and burn it in the flame of a candle. Please practice fire safety if you use this method. I have found that writing out a list of what I want to release helps me assess my priorities, clear my head, and it has a positive effect on my mood. My favorite way to do a releasing ritual is to write all of the things I wish to release onto fallen leaves, and then release those leaves into the wind or into the water. This method allows me to watch the negative elements being carried away from me, and it has a positive effect on my emotions and my mood. Another traditional way to do a releasing ceremony is to use a Yule log. If you have a fireplace and intend to burn a log on Yule, either alone or with gathered friends, strip pieces of bark from the log and write anything you want to let go of on the inner bark of the wood. Then return the bark to the log and burn it. Winter teaches us to slow down, take it easy and rest. Just like trees that drop their leaves in winter and focus all of their energy within and in their roots, winter asks us to hibernate and focus on our core, knowing that soon we will return refreshed and renewed to our full splendor like a blooming tree in the spring. As part of your Yuletide celebrations, take time to relax. You may even wish to clear your calendar or even schedule some extra downtime. You can capture a feeling of cozy contentment and well-being by enjoying some of the simple things in life this winter. Light candles or your fireplace. Curl up in a soft blanket or wrap. Enjoy your favorite book or beverage or both. This is the season to indulge in sweets, comfort food, and hot drinks. This is also a season of generosity and giving. The ancient Roman festival of Saturnalia is perhaps the most closely linked with the modern celebration of Christmas. The Roman festival of Saturnalia was held on the winter solstice. Boughs of evergreen trees and bushes would decorate the house, gifts were exchanged, and normal business was suspended. My favorite kind of gifts to give are handmade and personal. I love making art to give away and crafting with a special person in mind. 
All of these gifts are filled with magic and intention because they've been given your time, your focus, and your love. If you're interested in crafting gifts for the holidays, I'll leave a link to some of my Yule gift craft videos below. Even if you don't consider yourself an artist or craftsperson, there are so many handmade gifts that you can put together that would be loved by anyone this season. Consider making an herbal tea blend for a friend filled with their favorite fruits or flavors. Perhaps you're more comfortable in the kitchen than the crafting table. Consider making baked goods or sweets to give this season. A lovely purchased gift that honors the deep contemplation of this season could be a journal, a nice pen, and some journaling prompts. Consider what a gift of learning and knowledge might look like. You may wish to gift someone a class or a course, online or in person, for something that they've been meaning to learn, or an online learning subscription. The best gift can often be your time or an expression of your feelings. Text, email, or write a letter to someone telling them how much they mean to you. Make sure to list all of the qualities that you love about them. Or take the time for a long phone call to catch up and connect. Meet up for a favorite beverage and spend some time together this holiday season. Another traditional winter solstice practice is to go outside, cut down an evergreen tree, and bring it home to decorate with friends and family. The origins of this tradition vary, but the central theme of all of them is that the evergreen tree symbolizes life in the midst of death and the dark days of winter. It's nice to bring something green and fragrant into your home to remind yourself of the coming of spring and warm weather in the future. Traditionally, handmade decorations crafted of natural materials were placed on the tree such as salt dough and wooden ornaments, oranges, cranberry, and popcorn garlands, paper snowflakes and stars, pine cones and candles for light. You may wish to bring a tree or evergreen plants into your home to celebrate the season. Pine, conifer, mistletoe, and holly are most popular. Pine brings with it a strong magical protection for your home and also creates a sense of hospitality and welcome. Mistletoe doesn't have roots in the earth, but seemingly appears to grow from the air on trees. And so it is considered a sacred plant from the in-between or liminal spaces. Hang mistletoe in your home for protection and to bring love and peace to your household. Since ancient times, holly has been a sacred plant that offers protection. While most other plants wilt or die in winter weather, holly remains green and strong, its berries a brightly colored red in the harshest of conditions. There's a strong association between holly trees and the rebirth of the sun at the midwinter solstice. Holly's ability to keep its leaves is magical and gives hope for new life in the spring and a return of the waning sun's powers. Yule has its roots in the Old Nordic word Yule or the Anglo-Saxon Hule, both meaning wheel, which refers to the ever-turning year and nature's cycle of life, death, and rebirth. Following a lunar calendar leaves about 12 days left over each year. And so it is that the 12 nights of Yule are considered neither part of the old year nor part of the new year. These days are outside of time. They're a liminal time when the veil between the worlds is thin, a time when the gods walk the earth and people may see the elves or other spirits that live around us. The 12 days of Yule begins on Mother's Night, Yule's Eve, December 20th, moving forward 12 days with the 12th night ending on December 31st. Yule Eve or Mother's Night 
is the night on which reverence is shown for the female deities, ancestors, and for all living women, those who have protected and nurtured us all. You may wish to plan a devotion every day for 12 days, or do a small magical craft or working each day. I like to light a candle and leave an offering each day to the deities of the season and to the spirits of family members who have passed beyond the veil. I also include deities that are special or important to me personally, as well as gods and goddesses who represent the Yuletide season, the return of the sun, or those specifically concerning winter. I honor 12 spirits of the season, one on each night. How will you celebrate the winter solstice and the season of Yule or the 12 days of Christmas this year? I hope that you'll share your plans with me in the comments below. I also hope this video has given you some ideas on how to celebrate the season. And no matter how you celebrate, I hope you have a blessed Yuletide season filled with light and generosity. May the season bring you the release of what no longer serves you and connection with the people and the things that lift you up and have a blessed winter solstice.